Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello. Now, E3. It's been a thing. It's been a bit of a thing. A lot of people are like, that's a bit of a weird year. I kind of totally agree with them. Ubisoft was a bit... It was eh. a lot. Look, if you enjoy the games Ubisoft have already released, <laughs> then you'll probably love this conference. And you know what? Yeah. I didn't love it, but I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was really weird and it ended on a really weird note, but I'm sure we'll get to that. We'll get to that stuff. I've mostly got all these things in order. And they opened up with Watch Dogs 3 Legion or Watch Dogs Legion, and which to be honest, was the that was the best thing there for me. And I, I agree. It showed really, really well. The whole crack with Watch Dogs is that you can um, hire anybody in London um, and switch over to them and control them. They have a whole bunch of uh, specific animations and they have their specific voices and everything. Everything. Apparently it was a nightmare to code, um, <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Um, but they showed this like killing a killer granny, this like retired assassin. Helen, she Helen is she called. Is. Um, yes, she kills you. Helen looks amazing. Yes, she does. I want to just play as pensioners. Well, this is the thing. Watch Dogs Legion, before going into it, I'm a big fan of Watch Dogs 2. Yes. I'm with the franchise, but I was worried that this third game might start bringing diminishing returns. When mm. I figured out that you were, the leaks all said that you would be playing as different NPCs, I thought, oh, maybe you'll lose the central character that made yeah. Watch Dogs 2 so personality driven. But as soon as Helen turned up, <laughs> and I found that I could create a little gang of old age retired assassins. Feeding the birds? I was in for it, man. Feeding the birds it was such <laughs> high banter this entire reveal i don't know if that was intentional i assume I think it is so. i mean the second game was high banter as well yeah and but i'm they, here they for that. that they're that thing where they sort of like drew up like four different images from the, uh, the different people that you can play as and it was like this guy's a retired mi6 agent and this guy's like this like gangster or this ufc fighter and then we've got helen and her friend feeding the birds <laughs> in the park and to be honest i just want to play as her i just want to play as a pensioner squad yeah i so. mean i i loved the characters i thought the world itself all, I, I, I kind of think it's a bit you know it's a bit harsh to set it in such a futuristic version of London. Maybe regular London would have would, would have done well, but I Probably. thought it looked good. I thought, yeah, like the setting was great. The story drive was kind of cool. Mm. I was interesting that there was more action than I expected. The leaks yeah. before this was revealed all said that it was going to be a sort of a non-lethal game, essentially, that like you were going to be taking people down with melee combat, but hmm. this just had you shooting goons in the head, like always, <laughs> which, you know, I'm here for. I think you can probably pick and choose. And I like the stuff that they're sort of building on from Watch Dogs 2, like where you can just hack anything, fly on top of a drone. Yeah. Like in this new one, obviously, they've just gone hog wild with it. So the, one of the scenarios, they showed this gigantic drone that was like carrying like a container, and you can just climb on top of it and fly that in and then infiltrate a place that way. Yeah, man. I mean, it must Why have not? done something well, because we literally text each other at the same time going, <laughs> I'm going to re-download Watch, yeah, Watch Dogs 2. I'm going to reinstall Watch Dogs 2. definitely going to do do that yeah it, it, looks, it looks good it seems fun and um, it's just obviously there's the whole weird trappings where they were like oh it's in a post-brexit london and we're yeah. sort of jumping a few years ahead and it's like this cyberpunk dystopia turns out the only thing standing between us and a cyberpunk dystopia is a brexit vote I mean, so i mean you know that's, crack on that's that's good isn't it give me the really arm good. blades can't the wait for that you know what if i get some arm blades out of this brexit thing i think i'll if be I can all right off the walls then maybe it's fine maybe. but yeah so they showed some of that and um, which was like they kind of put their best foot forward i think that they did this because that was the one thing that leaked ahead of time yeah and um, because then we went into a big old demo with John Bernthal coming out to talk about Ghost Recon with his dog. John Bernthal is such a lovely lad, isn't he? He's a lovely lad. I like how people are comparing. It's like the MVP of E3 is either him, Keanu Reeves, or uh, uh, Kari. Oh, God, her name is like Akumi Narayuki, I think. I think um, so. Shinji Mikami's um, protege for uh, Ghostwire from the, uh, the other conference thing. It's been a long time. I've been doing a lot of conferences <laughs> in a row. But yes, um, but yeah, John Bernthal came out and talked about Ghost Recon, which for me, I was like, don't spend too much time on this because we know what it is. It's more Ghost Recon. You've already showed it. I know what you mean. I would have liked, to be honest, I would have liked a more extensive gameplay reveal. Mm. I thought the cinematic that we got was great. I love John Bernthal. I love mm -hmm. the idea of having a more grounded Ghost Recon. I like the idea that your injuries are going to sort of dictate your playstyle essentially mm. and make it more tactical. I like that they're bringing back the AI teammates, even though I played Wildlands in Quartz with actual people. Right. I thought having actual teammates was a good way to respond to some criticism mm -hmm. that the first trailer got. I think it looks good. I want to see more. It's kind of weird <laughs> that we didn't see more considering it's Where's out October. Gameplay? Where is the gameplay? That's the theme of this E3. Yeah. Where is the gameplay? Literally only Square Enix brought gameplay. Everyone else was like, here's a even Cyberpunk, yeah. here's a CG trailer. Um, and also another trend for E3 is bringing back features that you wanted the first time around <laughs> that we did 10 years ago. Like, oh, we're bringing back AI teammates. Like, yeah, yeah. full dialogue trees. He's NPCs. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, sure, you know, we liked them back in the day. It's weird, weird. They took them out in the first place, but we'll take them back. Um, so that, yeah, that kind of, they confirmed Ghost Recon Breakpoint, you know, whatever. It's, it's another Ghost Recon. Um, at least they had John Penthal sort of fronting it. Um, and then, this, is the, this isn't necessarily in the order that it happened, but I've just grouped these things okay. together. We got the, I was going to say, a Splinter Cell reveal. We, we got didn't. Sam Fisher reveal because he's part of a new app called Elite Squad. Listen. This is your fault for getting your hopes up, Scott. It's we not, knew he not, wasn't, we knew he wasn't going to be there. We knew it. 
Well, he technically was then. In case he but was in the, uh, they, they've just they've skylanded him. Dim. They've done what they did with Spyro, and they, I mean, at least he's not all weird. Like he just still he looks, looks like, like him. Sam Fisher. Yeah, it's sad to see, but I mean, you know, like giving us some. They're not giving us what we want. Do you know what's hilarious? Something. The thing is, like, because it's like this weird, like that you can take cover and shoot at other squads and stuff. Yeah. But their whole the, Ubisoft's whole shtick with this game is that it's it's our it's our best characters in one place, and then it was like military man from Ghost Recon, <laughs> military man from Division. At least you had Sam Fisher sort of sticking yeah, out. Yeah, you did. But like their whole their shtick these days is just they're the, the Tom Clancy devs like yes. that was, all their stuff was Tom yeah. Clancy stuff and it was like we're, we're bringing Sam Fisher back but he's just like lone wolf man who's now not a lone wolf and that's like, fine it's kind of weird that, like you said yeah like they have iconic sort of silhouettes of characters like the people <laughs> from Siege they are great sort mm -hmm. of silhouettes the people even like Far Cry protagonists kind of work as these kind of like weird isolated things mm. but they're not characters in the same way Sam Fisher well, that's the thing. is an iconic character if you're going to do a fun little lap where you bungle everybody together then you get you've already got a cartoon version of Sam Fisher, get cartoony Vass from Far Cry 3. Yeah. Put the rabbits in there. Like you've got, you can do, you can do this stupid app thing, and it'll be fun. But whatever. They're looking at that uh, Elite Squad and that being the only Splinter Cell related thing, even in their montage of 30 years <laughs> with the Ubisoft, they had the blooming goggles noise. And I was like, stop teasing us, Ubisoft. Are you gonna download this? Put it away. It. Yes, of course I am. Of course you are. Of course I'm gonna play it. It's Splinter Cell in it, and so I need to know how he plays. I've, I've, <laughs> I need to know. I mean, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna be anything close. But at least he has the hook knife. Is little, oh, is, that oh is it back? The knife's back. Hook knife. Yes. The little hook knife from Chaos Theory. Um, actually, it was a different knife in Chaos Theory. He got the hook knife in Blacklist, but near enough, it's a knife that he had. Splinter Cell wasn't there, Scott. It was not there, but you know, I like the thing with the cell. Um, yeah. So this kind of goes into a huge chunk of um, what made up the majority of the Ubisoft conference, which was them just saying, "Hey, you know those games that you've already bought? Yeah. Ghost Recon: The Division, Rainbow Six. We've got more stuff for them." John. Yes. There even For Honor, even For Honor got a trailer. It did, even For Honor, when that came on. And you know what, For Honor, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. It's, it's great. Not, it's not for me. No. I went up and got a drink when that came it's on. It's very solid, but the, the, the thing with the, the thing is, this is where it got annoying, was the trailer for For Honor, it was like from the studio that brought you For Honor. And I was like, oh, yes. I quite like the Melee side of that. Yeah. It's a nice little game. It's the most innovative, like unique game that Ubisoft has done in quite some time. Um, comes a For Honor DLC pack. What are you, why are you framing it <laughs> this way? Like, it just seemed really weird. They're this massive chunk, like I said, devoted to all these sort of like add-ons and DLC for existing games, which is a good thing. I think yeah. Ubisoft are, su are supporting their existing properties really well, but it's still strange to frame E3 around this it. Is what, this is what I keep coming back to, mm. right? Because I know you were really disappointed by this when we were messaging and before we came in here. I think it's just kind of like the changing landscape of the industry in general. Mm. Like, we're now moving into an era of live services, and these True. games are expected to last for a long, 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 long time. Mm -hmm. So it makes more sense that Ubisoft, who is the architect of the live service at the moment and is doing really good, genuinely good things with it, yeah. would double down on their existing games and get you excited for them because people are still playing them if you do love these games mm. if you're invested in the division or rainbow six siege and i am and some of the games it's exciting to see what's coming next because oh, no, no. there are big expans expansions. It's just weird in the context of E3 That's when you're thing. expecting new game reveals and new IP. Yeah, because like obviously E3 is as much for the, the audience and the consumer as it is for the shareholders to go like, look, we're a healthy company, we're doing all these yeah. different things, and I totally get that. And like, it's just that for my thing, you could have those fan bases are plugged into those community updates and those fan channels and everything else. These things could be just released on YouTube. Like for me, I'm like, what is even the point of doing your big, you know, song and dance conference, which literally had songs and dancing? It did. If you're not going to then do a whole bunch of new games, like you've got the eyes of the world as far as gaming can get them and you're not doing anything meaningful for me it. that's been a common criticism of the entire mm. weekend I mean it feels <laughs> it feels like an off year I think Sony have won the entire weekend by not doing it in <laughs> a way me that last time, I was yeah. Like, yeah I think they have yeah, because they, I think they kind of got that yeah we're gearing up for the next generation Microsoft literally announced that their next console is coming holiday 2020 mm -hmm. it feels like all of the studios like where's Capcom been probably working on their next gen game <sighs> so they have nothing to show yeah. so it feels like they're just kind of plugging the gaps in a way and still trying to save face because E3 is important and it will be important going into the next gen, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily important. Yeah, now. they're not ready yet. There's so many games got confirmed for November and then for next year. Yeah. And do you know what else got confirmed? Come we on, man. We knew it was coming, but we didn't know who was going to be in it. There's a Division movie. But uh, now, yes, yes. It's, I don't know if they already confirmed that Jay Gyllenhaal was in it. He I was definitely rumoured for it. they did. He was, yeah. So we've got Jay Gyllenhaal, we've got Jessica Chastain. Um, I, I love Big Chas. Give me, give me her in every single movie on the face of the earth. I agree. And Jake Gyllenhaal as well, man. That's a really good cast. Yeah, and I think like the thing is the the base setup of the division. Like, I mean, you can do like a nice gritty sort of I don't know, like tactical espionage thing set in New York. Like, there's enough little like elements there to do like a Michael Bay light style thing. Yeah, I so, mean, yeah. for me, I I love the setting. I hope it's the Division One. I like mm -hmm. I like the Division Two as well, but the Black Friday perpetual. Black Friday of the Division One in snowy Manhattan. Uh -huh. That is such a, a great setting. I was going to refer to it as like, iconic. It's recognizable. It is very recognizable. I'd go as far to say it's iconic. Give me a full yeah. Give me a full snow military movie. Yeah, kind of cool. The fact that it's on Netflix, however, mm. 
Eh, ooh, Netflix, <laughs> Netflix films. Netflix's track record is not very I'm good. I'm expecting it to be three stars if that, and Netflix is anything Is there any by. Netflix movie above three stars? Oh, actually, the one the Coens did. That was pretty good. That's true. But, but again, were these, these, I suppose, it's the, kind of the same thing. It could yeah. be fine. It Who could knows? be fine. Um, they also um, demo, well, weirdly, something that got rumored was this thing called Ubi Pass, which was going to be their yeah. monthly, essentially their version of Game Pass. Um, that didn't come true, but um, Uplay Plus did, but it's only on PC. Um, but it's, it's $14.99 a month, and you can access a whole bunch of Ubisoft games, but only on PC. So I wonder if they're just testing the waters and eventually that'll Probably, come to console. Probably, you would assume so, I yeah. mean, I guess. For me, it's like, I think it was $15 a month. Yep. That's quite reasonable and quite good. Mm -hmm. And if you love Ubisoft games, like, that's awesome for you. For me, I don't know why I'd play $15 a month to play the same Ubisoft game <laughs> over and over again because they're all just copied and posted anyway. Say, that's, they're the weirdest studio to do it yeah. because if you if you literally lined up all the Assassin's Creed, you'd have one through to Origins before you notice any difference. You'd be knackered by the end of that. <laughs> you'd be fatigued as hell. Origins and Odyssey take about 70 hours to yeah. get through as well. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, yeah, and even the Far Cry too. Like, yeah, I, I, Ubisoft had a hell of a catalogue, but if you start lining their games up, especially across the last sort of 10 years and yeah. um, they're very iterative like as opposed to innovative or whatever um, they also had uh, roller champions which did leak ahead of time it did um, but that's meant to kind of be their their attempt to sort of steal some of the rocket league audience again only on pc though isn't it thing. is recall. it i think oh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure they said only on pc or at least the bait is on pc i think it's better on pc okay um, either way though like them um, that just seems like like i mean i like a return to arcade sports i miss that i yeah. used to love what ea big used to bring to the table give me freestyle ssx God, whatever yes um, it's been way too long since we sort of got more like you know snappy arcade sports games um, Looking at it in motion, though, it didn't do much for me. But I don't know if it's because I just don't care about Roller Derby. That's it, nor me. But then again, I would have said the same thing about Rocket League before that long. No, but if I said to you, Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Power Battle Cars... I'd have or, said, huh? Yeah, and then I would have said, no, it's cars with nitrous. And they put the balls in the goal. And you would have said... I'd have said, that's mad. Give me it when it's free and I won't stop playing it for five years. That's, that's what, what we all said. Yeah, we'll like, oh, check it out. <laughs> so, like, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, supercars that have nitrous and can put, you know, football with cars, fine. People yeah. will check it out. For me, roller derby with Fortnite characters is a bit... I, I eh. think I'm, I'm with you on that one. I mean, maybe it'll be all right. Um, another thing they got announced is um, Rock... I never always get his name wrong. I said Rock. It's Rob. Rob McKelney. I can't, I can't pronounce the I can't Rob pronounce his name, but he's the dude. He's doing a mystic, this show called Mystic Quest, which is a game dev style TV show. I'm here for this. Again, the first part of this conference was such high banter that I was so on board <laughs> between Watch Dogs Legion and Helen, uh -huh. and then uh, uh, Rob from It's Always Sunny coming out and he's announcing stacked, this new show. By the way. He is stacked. Man he is was not absolutely stacked beefed. <laughs> uh, and I think that looks quite funny. Mm -hmm. I don't like that it's only on Apple Plus. I don't know. I don't have that service. It's, it's like they've got this whole idea they're going to do this comedy about developing a video game and what it's like being the developer behind one of the biggest games in the world. Nice and funny and they're poking fun at the industry and crunch and all that kind of stuff. And then at the very end, it's like, and it's coming to Apple TV Plus. And oh. it's like, no one's going to see it then. Oh. Like, put it on Prime, put it on Netflix, put it on anything, YouTube, like just whatever. And um, maybe it'll get a wider spread it eventually. Do. The cast um, was good. It looked promising. Seems solid. The little clip that they showed looked pretty good too. To be honest, even though we saw nothing from the Division movie, I like that Ubisoft are at least trying to make their properties into these multimedia things. Mm. It might not always work, but it seems like they're doing it in a more faithful way than other uh, companies. I know obviously Mystic Quest isn't like their thing or it's not a game or anything, but I like that they're trying to make authentic video game media outside of video Do games. Do you remember when they when they made an authentic Splinter Cell movie when they put the teaser inside Chaos Theory and then they didn't do it? Well, that was 2006. difficult, that. I mean, was it? Assassin's Creed wasn't very good either. No, it wasn't. But they, they did have um, Splinter Cell on the go one time, then they moved away from it. But, you know, yeah. not to worry. You're not talking about Splinter Cell anymore. Maybe they are right. bad. Sorry, mate. It might be. It might Sorry, be it always comes back to Splinter Cell. I, don't, I can't always, help it. It's just, circle. it's just my life. <laughs> <laughs> if only. If only that was there. Um, so, yeah, they ended on a new game called Gods and Monsters, which they didn't show much of. Um, but they said it's by the creators of Assassin's Creed um, Odyssey. Odyssey. Um, so, yeah, this looks like a very cartoony version of Assassin's Creed. It just had one character in, like, looked like a toga fighting this giant sort of griffin looking thing. Yep. And then just as you were about to maybe go into gameplay, no. cut. And that's it. And that's then, the end of the conference. <laughs> what was that? Um, so yeah, you, you were going to say you want to talk about the end of it because it was very, very well, sudden. That's literally it. It was just so sudden. This entire conference felt like it had <laughs> barely started and then barely gotten going. And then it was done. I was like, what? Is, is this their last thing? We all, Ubisoft, for all of their badness, yeah. always have a usually <clears throat> really good and exciting one last reveal. Yeah. And this was it. It was kind of exciting. I liked, liked, liked the it art style. Fine. 
It looked fine, but we saw about 30 seconds of it, and then the conference was just done. But it looked like something from their Ubi Art department. Like, I was just to love. I love Valiant Hearts, I love Child of Light, but it looked like the next one of them. But then it was like, because they had Eve Gamow on stage, and he was like, I'm so glad you guys are here, and we're going to show you some new stuff. This is our new project, and then Gods and Monsters, but then we're not really going to show you it. And then we cut, and then we go to the esports thing, and I was like, is this part of their show? (laughs) And that thing was like, just literally reduced my life expectancy on this earth. Turned it off. Horrible. I'm whatever, turn it off. It was T Pain fighting someone or something. He was was even here. on a boat or something wasn't he i don't know wasn't he on a boat at some point i don't know i think he was on a boat and um yeah and so they they sort of did that for a bit and then it was like oh i guess that's it then yeah and then that was it this weird petering out like just that was kind of it it's just i think a lot of the conferences this this year and especially ubisoft and microsoft to mm. an extent which i quite liked Same. started off with these big banner moments where you've got these celebrities mm. in you've got these big announcements you've got some genuinely quite funny bits but then they just that's all they had they had wonder, 10 minutes of good stuff and then sort of devolved into oh here's an update for the division 2 which you know is welcoming but not on the <laughs> e3 stage perhaps no it just it seemed like maybe they were just aware of the fact that people are going to check out the beginning of these things out of curiosity and maybe yeah. their own data points to people tapering off towards the end or something um but either way so far unless nintendo really brings it back i like square enix's conference mm. but for me i think a lot of e3 this year has been a bit of a wash. This is the one year where I've, I've I didn't watch uh, Square Enixes and I didn't right. watch Bethesda's and I skipped through them and I felt like I wouldn't have missed anything. I was no. watching Ubisoft's last night and I was I made a point of watching it. I thought no 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 I love E3. I I want to watch the conferences. Mm-hmm. I watched it and I thought. I could have just skipped through it. Well, see, I, I, like, I, yeah, I love the hype. I love the, the time of the year. Like, I'm, I'm up until three in the morning watching dumb crap. But, like, you know, I, I like that whole part of the year, but I don't know how much they... I just don't know how much E3 matters anymore. There's all the conversations around whether it's moving into a streaming platform. Devolver Digital's entire presentation was a 20-minute lampoon of that very idea, yeah. which I adore. Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, the, the vast majority, just it was just, here's a list of release dates, and here's some CG trailers. It felt very phoned in. It did. So... I mean, like, especially, the, like, the lack of Sony is obviously a big deal. And I think just the way that... The, the companies themselves sort of treated the event like they were still lavish and it was still big but mm. Ubisoft's show went on for a, what an, an hour and 15 minutes I remember a few years ago theirs went on for two hours because they were just packing they stuff, stuff in and it felt like they just didn't have stuff to show Microsoft as well showed off 60 games and they made a big deal of it but I can't remember <laughs> at least I can't remember 20 of them really to be honest at least yeah. they had some scoops like George yeah. Martin and uh, From Software's game is real or like you know I, actually to be honest that's mainly the big new one <laughs> but whatever yeah the, as looking at it um, across the board you guys can let us know what you think down in the comments below as far as I can see on online the general sort of uh, I don't know commentary on this is kind of skewing towards middling to negative yeah so we'll see what you'd see what tell us what you thought of e3 as well you can find us on social media as well for now though I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I've been Josh from whatculture.com and I'll catch you next time bye, bye.